This gap threatens all of us. Viruses don't care about borders or economic status. An outbreak in a resource-poor region can quickly escalate into a global emergency carried by migratory birds or through international trade. The weakest link in our biosecurity chain sets the limit for everyone's safety. That's why we need more than just data sharing. We need real financial and technical help, especially for those who need it most. Without a fair global approach to biosecurity and surveillance, our efforts to stop H5N1 will stay fragmented and ultimately just not enough. The avian influenza crisis, honestly, goes way beyond virology and economics. It's tearing at the threads of our social fabric and forcing us to face some tough ethical questions. The main method of controlling outbreaks, mass culling, is, well, a harsh necessity that comes at a steep price. Watching millions of birds being euthanized and disposed of raises real animal welfare concerns, and it takes a heavy emotional toll on the farmers and veterinarians who have to do this grim work. Even though it's crucial for disease control, it makes us think hard about our relationship with the animals in our food system and the moral cost of large-scale agriculture where individual lives are sacrificed for the greater good and market stability. Fear and misinformation have created a second crisis, one that's almost as devastating. When reports surfaced about the virus infecting pets, panic swept through some communities. People started abandoning their cats and dogs at shelters, and in extreme cases, even euthanizing them out of misplaced fear. 